Hey ladies, welcome back to my Fierce Aging series. So I have a special guest in my studio today. Her name is Joan, she's 80 years old, and this is such an amazing, fresh makeup tutorial showing you all kinds of different techniques, working with the skin, and sharing Joan's story of something really fun that she started in her 70s, and showing you that age is really not a factor. So ladies, are you ready? Let's get this beauty started. eight years. And so you decided to pick that up in your 70s? I decided to pick it up when I was 73, yes. And what made yes. you want to do that? My husband passed away and it took me a couple years to get up the nerve to check out studios and when I finally did I hit the right one and been doing it ever since. It's, it's great exercise. Uh, I have osteoporosis and between that and workouts it's reversed it. Oh really? I didn't think that was possible, but it has reversed it. Back to osteopenia. Oh, wow. With their beauty. Uh, well, I exercise a lot, and I think exercise helps keep you healthy. And when you're healthy, you're, you look nicer than you do when you're not healthy. You feel good, and it shows in everything that you do, and the way that you treat other people, and the way you treat yourself. Um, as far as beauty is concerned to me that that would be the only thing I would say I think moving around keep moving and keep exercising is vital do whatever you can so we're gonna go in with the ever skincare pads to brighten Joan's skin now she has pigmentation that is a concern of hers I did a great video on all the products that can help you with hyperpigmentation so this is something like dark spots that we see on the side of our face and we can help improve them I give you lots of different options but I'm just going to take an exfoliation pad this is going to help really just brighten Joan's skin it's not aggressive on the skin this has azelaic acid caviar lime it's a beautiful product to help brighten the skin help with texture help with all those little pigmentations you will feel a little tingling with this product it's nice and active and this is how we're gonna start off with this prepping of the skin. I'm gonna go in with the Ever Moisture Injection Cream. I love this cream, it's nice and rich. It really gives a nice base to the skin before the BB cream. So it looks really, really plump on the skin, hydrating, and that's what you really want. You want that glowiness. You really wanna prep the skin properly so you do have the final product looking really nice. So prepping the skin is very important. I'm going to just take our foundation brush here. This is a flat one. It's coming from my Essential Makeup Brush Kit, nine 100% vegan brushes that I designed for you, keeping it in a travel little container so it's easy, you don't have to worry about it, throw it into your bag. And I'm going to apply this to Joan's face and you're going to see that you're going. she's gonna have that radiance right after I apply this. I'm gonna go in with It Cosmetics by By Under Eye. This is a soothing, brightening, and depuffing cream underneath the eyes. I like how it goes into the skin, it melts into the skin, it doesn't sit and stay heavy. That's one of my big things when it comes to eye creams that I want them to go into the skin, really hydrate, prep our under eye area for our concealers or any color correctors that we're going to do. I'm gonna go in with our La Rose Pro Se. This is our mineral SPF 50. You know I love this because it's light on the skin and I'm going to, you obviously apply it with your hands. I'm doing this because I'm working on a client so I'm going to be using my foundation brush but this is a nice, just very, very sheer, lightweight sunscreen which is really beautiful. So you're not adding that heaviness to the skin. Again, it is a physical sunscreen, it's not chemical. I just love how this doesn't make everything slip and slide and it doesn't make mm -hmm. your foundation or your BB cream pill and roll off your face. So this is why I have stayed tried and true with my La Roche-Posay SPF 50. We're gonna start prepping the eyes, just like the skin, because we need to exfoliate the eyes. This is my B5 exfoliating pad, which is very interesting. A lot of people don't know that you can exfoliate your eyes if you have very oily eyes, if you have darkness on the eye. It's just skin like the rest of our face, so we really need to pay attention to it. We want our eyeshadow to look the best it can. This is something you can do once a week, twice a week. You don't have to do it every single day. No. So I'm just going to lightly just give a refresh to the skin. This is really nice. 
Because think about it, you're exfoliating everything else on your face and your body, and then you're leaving your eyelids that tend to look not so fresh, look a little darker. So this is nice that it's large enough too that you can go underneath the eye area. Everything is prepped on the skin and the eyes. I'm gonna take my eye and lip primer and I'm gonna take my concealer brush and I'm going to neutralize out the eyelid. This is really important for me as a makeup artist because I want to have a really neutral base on the eye. I don't want to have the eyeshadow not look true and muddy in with maybe redness or darkness or veins or anything else going on the eyelid. So we go from the base of the lash line all the way up to the brow bone. I just tap in really nicely. I don't get too much. Less is more when it comes to the eyes and the eye primer. So you can see I'm going to the base. Joan has just a little bit of redness down here at the base. Some blues coming through as we age. Of course, our skin gets thinner. We start seeing things that we never saw before. And so we just do a nice little neutralizing. This is, we're working with the skin. We're not working against it. We're like, okay, we see a couple little things. Let's just neutralize it out. Get this to keep our eyeshadow on all day long looking beautiful looking true you can see that this is going to be a beautifully primed eye i'm going to just turn you right in here and then this eye is not so you have a little redness here a little discoloration so it's a really a great way to have a nice base to the eye before you start with your eyeshadow so instead of going right into the eyeshadow, I want to frame Joan's brows first because that will really dictate how I'm going to do her eyes, how much I'm gonna do. So I'm just taking our skinny brow in taupe. It has a little spoolie on the other end where I can comb through if I feel like it's a little too dark. But this taupe is a nice little skinny pencil where I can get those hair strokes. So let's look at Joan's brows here. So this is very normal too, ladies, that I didn't mention in one of my last videos is that one of our brows is always usually higher, and that's fine. Don't try to match your brows exactly, because it's very unnatural. Oh. So you have a little higher here, and it seems to be when I was doing permanent makeup, everyone's left brow is always higher. So we have it, it's over a little bit compared to where it should be starting. So we have this brow here, it looks beautiful, but we're gonna fill it in. We're gonna give it a little bit more structure. Over here, you can see the brow is a little bit more on a flatter side. It goes just, it doesn't arch as high. So it's not really that realistic for me to try to match her other brow. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make them look the best that they can and as natural as they can according to Joan's bone structure. So how do I do that? So I'm gonna go on the inner corner of her nose straight up. So you can fudge this depending on, it doesn't have to be exact. So you can go straight up and you can see, okay, this is where the brow should start according to her bone structure. We'll work that out. Ball of the nose, straight across. You're gonna see where she's gonna be arching. So we don't wanna go higher than this. We see where it should be arching, that's fine. And then we see where it's ending, that's perfect. So again, on this side, we go, she's starting where she should be. So you can see that we have a little space here that's off from the left side, which is fine. We'll be, we're just gonna work with this brow, ball of the nose, so we can see this is where she needs to arch just a little bit more. We can give a tiny bit of lift to make it look like it matches the left side. So this is really for you uh, watching this, this is her right brow, but it's really her left brow. So when I say that, just make sure you're taking notes there. Corner of the nose, corner of the eye, and this is where we end. I go a little bit shorter because I don't want to drag down the brow. So here we go with looking at the brow. This is where it should start. I'm just going to start filling in where she normally has, where her hair is, where she normally has this beautiful hair. And I'm going to just start building it out a little bit here. So it's going to balance the eye a little bit more. And then you'll see she has this hair and then it just goes right up into that brow, right? It's kind of like she has this hair and then we miss something here and then it's just, this is a little, this is very normal as we age. So I wanna marry those two. I wanna bridge those together. So you can see, I'm giving that shadowing. So I am connecting that front part of her hair to the thinner part of the brow. I don't want a real thick hair and keep filling that in and then have the very thin brow. I want it all to kind of flow together. So you can see how it's coming along. It looks really beautiful already, just giving that kind of that bridge. 
And again, you can see the stroking. Do you see how I'm just filling in? I'm not going in too dark. This is a taupe. If I feel like it's too dark when I finish because she has silver hair, I'll take my spoolie and I'll run it through. It doesn't, it doesn't, you don't have to be, I don't want to do lighter brows. I don't want to do darker brows. I'm in that taupe family to really give her that structure. She has white hair. She has blue eyes and she needs to have some kind of structure. I'm not going to lighten her brows. I'm not going to make them gray. I want them to look really natural, not too dark and not too light. You can see from the two different brows now that we have some beautiful structure. We have a nice color, so we're defining her brow area there. And then we have some gray brows here, which we will be able to cover with our brow fix in a moment. And then I'm going to just really create a brow that's a little bit higher and also structured. can feel how you're doing that so now I know how by the way it feels mm hmm so ladies this is a really important part so her left brow which is going to be your right brow on camera is higher so when I'm trying to match this right brow here I'm not going to go underneath here because it's already more flat than her left brow I want to concentrate on building up the structure above her brow so it really looks like it's giving her a mini facelift. So it's lifted. Do you see how we started with the flat brow and now I've just given a little heart height where it should arch. So we're looking more symmetrical there. So the brows are completed. They're looking beautiful. You can go back and you can touch them up. Maybe if you feel like once you finish your makeup, you're like, oh, I want a little bit more, a little bit longer. You can do that. Nothing is set in stone when we do makeup. I'm going to go in with blonde, a little brow fix, because I told you that she has some of those gray brows that we all do. We love them. We like to keep them in the brows. Don't pluck them out, ladies. So I'm going to just take a little bit of the color and we're going to give her three dimensional. We're going to cover them going to make her look like she has a little bit more hair than she does, covering that beautiful gray in the brow, working with it, not against it. Now again, ladies, it can look a little darker because she has no makeup on. So once we pull it all together, don't get ahead of me. We are working towards this beautiful, beautiful, complete makeup tutorial in our 80s. So we're going to go in with Fresh Beauty. This is really a beautiful palette, soft pinks, and it has tiny bit of it's going to be in more of the plums at the end it's just going to look really really beautiful together and i i love this for i actually joan says that she uses this now you're using I fresh do. beauty mm -hmm. so i was very impressed that i picked a palette that she likes using but this is going to be great because she's going to know how to really use it on her eyes taking the middle color and you're going to see i'm not afraid of sheen this is what we're going to be doing putting on a beautiful sheen on the eye just to pop it a little bit so I'm going to pick up the product by pressing it on one side of the brush. That's really important. Don't go tapping it down like this because it's not going to apply properly. I want you to put, put enough product, load up the brush. If you feel like you have a little too much, just tap off, not a big deal. We're gonna go right to the center of the eye. So you know that I like to put most of the product in the center and then I'm going to drag it to the corner of the eye and then come back to the other. Again, when we're working with more mature skin, eyes, what have you, less is more and that's what I like. It's a wash of color. I'm not trying to do anything over the top dramatic where Joan finishes and she's like, wow, I don't even look like myself. I would never wear this. I want her to feel comfortable, beautiful, confident, but not like, wow, the makeup's wearing me. What happens? Like, that's <laughs> not exactly what I was expecting. We're just gonna go right on the other eye. I'm gonna go into our contour color, so darkest color in the palette. 
I'm gonna take what I like to call my smudge brush, but it's called short, or my eraser brush, it's called the short smudge brush. And I'm going to pick up, this is a dense brush, so it's gonna pick up more product. I'm just gonna kind of move it all around the brush so it's on both sides, because you're gonna see why in a moment. So I want to, now Joan has a little bit more of a deeper set eye here, more prominent brow bone. So I want to place the product where she has her crease and I'm gonna just come up a little higher on this brow bone. So I'm gonna recede that just a little bit for her. So that's why it's on both sides of the brush. So when I go in, I'm placing it down here on the eye lid itself and then it's coming up on that brow bone. It's gonna give it some beautiful shading, really nice, soft, but it's gonna give her a little dimension. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other eye. I'm going to go in with the lightest color and I'm going to just give a little bit of blending when it comes to the brow bone and lightening up just that deeper color right here. I want it to all look like it's going together. Some might say since Joan has more deep set eyes that I shouldn't go in with a darker color like that. It's not really a darker color. Again, it's a wash of color. I want to have that definition to her eye that's why i chose to do that it's not a deep brown it's not a black it's not a rich you know flat color it's a beautiful sheen that's just going to give her just some dimension when it comes to the eye i'm going to go in with my favorite my dark chocolate this is a waterproof eyeliner it's going to nicely go across the eye you know how i like to do my eyeliners when it comes to mature eyes i get tight in that little lash line really define the eye area it looks absolutely beautiful but you're not risking making your eyes look older or making it look heavy or making it look like it just doesn't go with the look just taking the eyeliner and i'm going right into the lash line i want to make her lash line look thicker than it is and i want to really define her eye now you could use if you wanted to you could use a mauve pencil that would be your choice same technique, and again, I just stop a little shorter than where the eye goes. I'm not dragging the eye down. I'm not creating a new eye shape. I'm just going in to really define that eyelid. Joan just noticed that I do little strokes because you have more control doing that. You can see how I'm just building up this lash line looking gorgeous. Even with her looking down, it's amazing how before you really didn't see a lash line. Now you have this beautiful lash line. Seriously, this is my favorite part of doing makeup because it's like you are just revealing the beauty as we go going in with a black volumizing mascara. Now this is where this wand really comes into play. I can't use an eyelash curler on Joan's lashes because they're too short, but I wanna get every single one of them. So I have a tiny little teeth on both sides. This is flat. This brush is going to grab those lashes and really pull them out. So look down. Gonna go back in with my dark chocolate and balance the eye out look up just gonna do a three quarters underneath the eye and then i'm gonna smudge it out with the eraser brush in true fierce aging fashion we are going to go in with a little lashes it's always so much fun my ardell 420s are on my little tray here and we're going to cut them down to fit joan's eye perfectly and make it look very very natural
So I'm specifically cutting the lashes for Joan because her eyes don't look like they could really take this full lash line. I don't want to drag the eye down with the lashes. I want to bring them up and I want her eyes to really be bright and it really just look really fresh. So when I see eyes that don't really fit the lash itself, I just take a little scissor, cut the end off so I'm not feeling, you, you know it, when you, when you match the, the lash band to your eye and it drags down, you're like, wait, my eye already ended? that's when you know you really need to cut the lashes just a little bit shorter. I'm going to do a little vitamin E lip though while I do her skin to prepare for the lips. So this is gonna be great. Again, ladies, you always want to hydrate the lips. You're always wanting to do a lip treatment so your lips look absolutely gorgeous when you put on a lip gloss or if you put on a lipstick so we're going to just hydrate them before I'm gonna go in with just peachy Joan said that that is her big concern underneath her eyes so we're gonna lighten up the eyes we're gonna color correct I just did a color correcting video for you showing you how to use green color corrector the just peachy learning how to wor work with the eye brightener that we're gonna be using in a little bit so I'm gonna just take my concealer brush and I'm gonna go into the just peachy and I'm just trying to lighten up that under eye area. So this is how I'm gonna do it for Joan's structure. Put your, head, your face down a little bit. We're gonna go right into this inner corner here and we're gonna come down. So we're, I'm gonna hit all of that darkness, right? Like this little guy over here, we're going to lighten that. So this guy mm -hmm. here. So you're, you're seeing before your eyes right now, this is not magic tricks. I'm, not, I'm working with the skin, ladies. I'm not trying to blanch out her skin, cover it up, pancake makeup. I'm not doing that. I'm working with her skin to look as natural as possible. But you can see with just putting that Just Peachy over these darker areas, how it neutralized them. So it's wonderful. So you can do this. This is why you also want to really prepare your skin. You want to have it super hydrated. You don't want to have it dry dry skin, you're going to see everything on the skin. You're going to see everything that you place on the skin. It's going to look dry and flaky. Hydrate the skin. Really work with the skin. Help the skin out. So when you put on your concealer or your foundation, or your BB cream, it looks beautiful. So I'm going to go into all of these areas here just really nicely, giving us a nice color correcting before I go in with a concealer or whatever I feel is going to be a great thing to do. So I'm going to work around the face just giving her that color correcting on these pigmentation spots. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use the BB cream because I wanna see how much coverage I really want. Again, for me, my style is less is more. I want more natural skin. I don't wanna see heaviness on the skin. I know Joan doesn't want that, so I'm not gonna do that. So I wanna see first before if I feel like I need a concealer, I can definitely do it over the BB cream or do I need an eye brightener? Do I just need some things to highlight the skin? Let's put it all together first and then go back and see if we need to add extra. I'm gonna go in with my Fiercely Smooth. This is a beautiful face primer. It's just gonna blur the skin. I'm just gonna really concentrate on the T-zone area of her face. This will help minimize large pores. The BB cream goes on really beautifully. So I'm just gonna blur out the skin. And I have taught you how that you really want the concentration of your foundation CC cream, BB cream to be in the center of the face and then work it out. Cause that's where we really have a lot of the redness or we have those veins. And so we're going to just really concentrate in this T-zone with our primer, and then we're gonna go into our BB cream. I'm using our BB cream in light. This is a beautiful formulation that's going to be very soothing on the skin. It's made for mature skin. It has aloe, ginseng, chamomile in it. I'm gonna use, actually, in my brush kit, the foundation buffing brush. This is my favorite. It comes in the kit or it can come by itself. And we're going to I'm gonna just place this on the skin in this area that I told you. This is the most concentration of the product. I'm gonna warm up Joan's skin just a little bit so you can see fair would have been too light. So this is light. I tried light medium on her, it was a little too dark. So I wanna warm up the skin and I wanna buff it into the skin and have it really look like her skin, just really even toned and really beautiful. So 
Now, I had a question recently about how to not get foundation into the hairline when you have white or gray hair. That's why I have the buffing brush. I designed it to be not too big. There's so many out there that are too big and I was always getting so much foundation in my hair and then I had to take it out. So I made the buffing brush just the right size, not too small, not too big. So I haven't had any issue working around Joan's hairline. I'm not going up into the actual hairline, obviously, but this allows me more control when I'm swirling it around and going down the sides of the face that I'm not getting into the hair. So that's nice because that would be a very big problem for us that we go in with a little bit warmer of a foundation. That's what we wanna do as we age, warm up the skin, but we don't want to warm up our gray hair or our silver hair or white hair. Right. I've been bringing down the BB cream also onto her neck. So everything looks really, really nice and even. I have the BB cream on her skin now and I wanna see where I want to give a little extra coverage. So I have a concealer wheel here. This is a trio. This is actually in the cool family, but I have a warm color here so I can really customize this for her skin and just give her that extra right underneath the eyes because I know that was Joan's issue. She really wanted to combat this little bit of this darkness here. So I'm gonna just work this into the skin again I'm not, I'm bringing it down as you know in my little triangle because we have that pigmentation right here. I want to lighten that up. I don't want to just do a little circle underneath her eye that doesn't, that doesn't give us the benefit of what we're really needing. So I'm customizing, I'm, co I'm covering, and then I'm gonna set it with a brightening powder. I'm going to take Nikita Banana, which is a color correcting powder, triple milled, very light weight. It's not gonna be adding weight to Joan's skin. Now what's really nice about this, I'm gonna just Go into the T-zone area. You can see how beautiful this BB cream gives her skin life. It looks really, really pretty, very vibrant, very fresh. And I'm just gonna look up so we can get just right underneath there. We're gonna set that concealer, that Just Peachy. And another thing, ladies, is the skin moves. We have more skin slackening. We have to be really realistic. And so when we smile, yes. Are we gonna see some concealer sometimes? Do we need to have a little touch up in our purse? Of course, because the skin does not, is not super tight and nothing's moving on it. When we put makeup on our skin, it does move. So we wanna work with that. We don't want to feel like, oh, once I put it on, it's never gonna move. It's just, that's just the reality of makeup. And working with skin, whether you're 18 or you're 88, it's the same thing. I'm gonna go in with Palm Beach, one of my favorite cream blushes. It's going to just pop Joan's skin. This is my favorite thing to do on the ladies. As you know, I'm always putting on this beautiful blush that just makes your skin look radiant and smile. So I'm going to take it right back like this. I want it to be on those beautiful cheeks here that Joan has, and then I'm gonna just work it back. I'm going to be going in with Cameo. This is a cold pencil. It's like your lip color, beautiful. I could go in with Glacier Pink or Sweet if you wanted more of on a pink tone, but this is just gonna be nice and neutral. And then I was going to, I picked out two different lipsticks to give Joan a option. One of them was Actually I Can. She's like, oh, I've been using that. And it's funny because I love using Actually I Can in my 80s decade. I used it with Sandra, if you remember her video where she started a YouTube channel in her 70s and I was like, you know what, Actually I Can. My age doesn't matter, age is just a number. And that actually really applies to Joan too. She started ballroom dancing in her 70s. There's no limitations of when you start something because of your age, so I think that's amazing. So this was really on point for Joan, but I wanted to switch it up for her and have one that call, is called Make It Work. Still on that beautiful pink family, but Joan is making things work, making things work differently in her life, making things work the way she wants to make them work on your own terms you're in your 80s trying to see <laughs> she's doing it so we're going to give her this powerful lip and it's going to look really beautiful so i'm going to go in with coco 13 i just thought i would mix it up a little bit i would normally would pick shams but i wanted to give her just that hue of the pinks and having a little metallic in there no makeup tutorial is complete ladies without having a little gloss on the lips to really just give you that freshness to feel it's really beautiful i had mentioned my eye brightener before that you can do a little touch up this is going to be a color correcting or it can be used as a concealer 
I like to sometimes just go back into where we have that darkness on the side of the nose just to give us that little pop in here if you feel like it still looks a little dark or anything else on the face and then just work it in. We're gonna go in with Caudalie. This is a beauty elixir. This is going to set the vibe for Joan before she sees her makeup. This is just a really beautiful essential oil, just kind of hydration pick me up. So I'm gonna have you close your eyes. Mm. One of my favorite things like to do. <laughs> so now we're gonna show Joan what she looks like. Okay, where am I? Oh, there I am. Oh, oh look under the eyes, how it's so much better. I don't barely see that too. <laughs> But you don't feel like it's too much coverage and not, like, you, do you no, feel like yourself? I, I do, I do. And I feel like if I'm going to a, a dance, it's not real fancy, but I feel like I, I'm going to have a little extra makeup that will show in low lights and will make me feel more dressed up. Do you feel, do you feel confident and beautiful when, when you wear makeup? I feel much more confident when I wear makeup, yes. You know, I do without it, yes. Yeah, that's, and I love the false eyelashes. <laughs> they look so pretty. <laughs> because mine had become very sparse. Mm -hmm. And so that's, yeah. and the cheeks, lovely. I'm so happy, and I'm so happy you, you joined us, ladies. You got to see Joan and just sharing her beauty with you, sharing her story. And until my next video, we'll see you later. Bye.